This video will cover urban settlements which forms part of the settlement section of the geography syllabus. Urbanization came about when communities were able to produce a surplus of food. Communities then had the opportunity to carry out other activities. Trade became the main function. The Industrial Revolution caused industrialization and manufacturing to explode um, and urban settlements to grow. Urban settlements expanded differently around the world. If we look at South Africa, um, or if we rather, if we look at the earth, 55% of the earth is urban, 65% of South Africa is rural. So we can see that South Africa is slightly behind in terms of the average world urbanization. Then if we just look at some of um, the urbanization and urban settlement terms, urbanization, an increase in the population of people living in an urban area, urban growth, the number of urban dwellers or people living in urban areas, urban expansion is the size of the urban center and how it increases relating to spatial area, level of urbanization is the percentage of the total population in urban settlements, and rate of urbanization is obviously the speed of urbanization, how fast urbanization is taking place. Then if we look at some more differences between rural and urban, in terms of their population size, rural small, urban large, economic activity, rural mainly primary activities, uh, urban areas mainly secondary, tertiary, quaternary activities, look at their functions, unifunctional in rural areas, multifunctional in urban areas. If we look at their pattern, dispersed or nucleated in rural areas and in urban areas, it can only ever be nucleated. If we look at the land use, uh, rural areas specifically focus on farming, whereas urban areas focus on other developments such as commercial, residential, industrial, etc. Looking at the site and situation with specific reference to urban settlements, when we look at site, is it a natural harbour, a dry point settlement, a wet point settlement, bridging points, defensive points, gap or pass points, relief, we look at the surrounding relief, um, as well as the relief of the land on which the settlement is located. Is it close to a route? Is it on a route point? Uh, look at the natural resources. Situation, we're looking at the topography, access to transport, access to communication, access to infrastructure, as well as the markets or shops that can be established in that settlement. Then if we look at types of urban settlements, a specialized settlement is a settlement that has developed due to one dominant function in the area. So if we look at a town like Stellenbosch, it's obviously a university town. It is um, an example of a specialized settlement because it has this one dominant function, which has allowed the entire settlement to develop. Then if we look at a trade or transport settlement, settlements that develop at a point where transport routes meet or where trade dominates. Then we get four different types of transport settlements, a junction town obviously occurring um, where two or three roads meet together, a gap town, this is obviously occurring um, in a valley, a bridge town, and then a port town, which is a town that is located on the ocean um, close to a port. Then a break, of bulk a break of bulk settlement, this is a point where one form of transport changes to another. So if we look at, if we look at an example of Durban, we have ships coming in with containers, then we have a change of transport to um, land transport, such as trains or trucks, which then transport these containers more inland to places like Johannesburg. Then if we look at a central place settlement, is a settlement that supplies urban services to the surrounding area and population. A gap town, a town situated in a natural gap in a mountain range, and a junction town is developed where transport routes converge. I've obviously explained these two previously. Then if we look at urban hierarchies, an urban hierarchy formed um, based on the number of functions which a settlement offers. Settlements high up on the hierarchy of the um, offer specialized services, which are not found lower down on the hierarchy. Then if we look at low and higher order goods and services, Definition of a low order good is a functional good that you need often. A high order good is a functional good that you do not need on a regular basis. Some examples relating to low order goods, bread, milk and tea. High order goods, jewelry or TV, 
uh, low order services such as transport or a mechanic, um, high order services such as a specialized surgeon or university. Then we look at their threshold population. So this is the population, the, uh, the plausible population that is attracted to this good or service, depending on whether it's a lower order or a higher order good or service. Uh, in terms of low order goods, we're looking at a small threshold population, whereas with higher order goods, we're looking at a much larger population. Then number of shops and services. Many shops and services offering low order goods because they are used on a regular basis. Whereas higher order goods, there are fewer shops because they're used on a less regular basis. Then if we look at hierarchy of function, the larger the size of the settlement, the fewer the number of settlements, many small um, settlements, whereas there are few large towns. Larger settlements are, for, are far, um, further apart from each other. As a settlement increases in size, its range and number of function increases. Um, number of higher order goods also increase, which attracts surrounding places. Then if we look at central place theory, this diagram is a great diagram to illustrate the development of a central place. Once again, we give credit to um, the St. John's College geography notes for this diagram. If we look at some central place parameters, people want convenience, businesses want to maximize profits, and consumers want to minimize transport costs. The central place theory is um, concentrated around these three parameters. Then if we look at the terms in detail, some of them I've already mentioned, the threshold population, the minimum number of people needed to support a settlement or business, range, maximum distance a consumer is prepared to travel for goods and services, market area, an area from which a business draws its customers, and a sphere of influence which is similar to a market area is an area from which a business or service draws its customers. Then if we look at some of the limitations, um, around central place theory. It is, assumes rational customers, the landscape must be isotropic, um, does not account for competition. Then if we look at um, forces applicable to urban land use, centripetal forces, um, forces which tend to keep certain functions in the city and attract others, these are similar to our pool factors. So site attractions, um, functions attached to certain locations, functional prestige, certain locations are prestigious, which draws people in, functional convenience, functions that need large populations are in accessible areas, such as the middle of towns, functional magnetism, functions um, that attract each other, so similar functions. So all your car related stuff will generally be in one location. You'll have one guy who does um, repairs on the tires, another guy who sells car parts, etc. Then if we look at the opposite of centripetal for, um, forces, we get centrifugal forces, which are basically your push um, forces, your push factors, forces which cause functions to move from the city towards the periphery, um, encroaching on that rural urban fringe. Uh, some of these include high tax rates in the city, crime, high rent, pollution, congestion because of traffic and people, lack of parking, um, affects the CBD um, and results in decentralization, businesses move out of the CBD. As a consequence for urban areas in terms of social impacts, low income groups move into the CBD, there's um, increase in crime, unemployment increases and squatters invade the CBD. If we look at it from an economic perspective, stagnation occurs, buildings are unoccupied, reduced employment opportunities, informal trading increases, services collapse, and there is urban decay. Then if we look at um, changing urban patterns and land use, CBD, um, many CBDs are undergoing urban renewal and gentrification, um, which are taking place. Urban renewal is when old functions and buildings are replaced, um, either through improvement or rehabilitation, Gentrification is when residential space is upgraded to tiny little market spaces or etc. Um, such as Victoria Yards. Low income groups, however, are often displaced, which is obviously a bad social consequence. Outlying business districts or your OBDs form due to decentralization. 
we get counter urbanization taking place which I have explained in my previous video then if we look at residential zones um, because they become densified with high density buildings and gated communities due to high income um, we also get some new ruralism taking place because people are displaced from their homes uh, rural urban fringe is constantly under pressure for development as people um, expand outwards with the increasing population then if we look at specific issues with informal settlements um, it's good to look at some of the following limited land ownership overcrowding unhygienic living conditions illegal structures are dangerous little provision of services high pollution social problems such as crime disease and high unemployment levels this concludes the video for urban settlements my next video will cover issues associated with urban settlements thank you